described in captioned media program. In the classroom and online, dcmp.org. Young Heroes. Louis Braille. Executive Producers, Steve Levitin, Paul Bronfman, Timothy Smith, Veronica Young. Producer, Patrick Doyle. Home from school, a teenage boy strides into his room and tosses his knapsack on the bed. Still wearing his shades, he grabs some drumsticks and starts practicing his technique. Chris, don't you have a project to finish for tomorrow? Project, right. Uh, yeah, Mom, I'm just working on it. Hey, Charlie. His voice-activated computer turns on. How you doing? Well, thank you. I need any of the files you've got on a guy named Louis Braille. Nothing complicated, just the basics. I want to get this over with. Why don't you fire up the browser and take a look around? As the computer loads the browser and begins searching, Chris continues drumming. There's a Louis Braille website available. Hey, go for it. The website opens on a rustic farmyard where a young woman in period costume looks up and smiles. Hello. Welcome to the Louis Braille website. I'm Catherine Braille, Louis' oldest sister. Where would you like to begin? Uh, at the beginning would be good. All right. Louis was born on January 4th, 1809, in our small village of Couvray, France. He was so weak at birth, no one thought he would live. There were four of us children. Our father, Simon René, married my mother, Monique, in 1795. My father was the village harness maker. Uh, get to the good stuff. This was two years after King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette lost their heads to the guillotine. Better, much better. Soon after that, of course, Napoleon took over. But our story begins when Louis was only three, playing in his favorite place on earth, my father's workshop. Louis was fascinated watching my father at work. Maybe a little too fascinated. At the workbench, Louis watches his father force a sharp pointed awl through a piece of leather. When he reaches for the awl, his father stops him. Papa? Papa? Louis's older sister rushes in. The army's retreating from Russia. What? Napoleon's been beaten. Everyone's talking about it. Come, quick. Simon puts down his work and hurries out after her, leaving Louis alone at the workbench. The boy's eyes are drawn to the awl. He looks out the window, but the tool draws his eyes again like a magnet. He picks it up, gripping the piece of leather in one hand, he tries to force the sharp point through it, pushing upward toward his face. His small hands tremble as he pushes harder. Suddenly, the point slips. He claps a hand to his eye. My poor little brother lost the sight in his right eye, and though we changed his bandages every day, the infection spread to his left eye. One morning in the farmyard... What's wrong, Louis? What is it? I see smoke, but I can't smell it. He turns to Catherine. Her face, when he peers at it, is hazy. It broke my heart. One morning it was bright and sunny out, but Louis slept in. When my mother went to wake him, he asked her why he had to get up in the middle of the night. He said it was still pitch dark. Louis was completely blind. In the workshop, Louis Braille, a young teenager now, sits beside his father at the workbench. How was school today? Boring. How can learning be boring? I can do the arithmetic in my head faster than others can do it on paper. I'm already the head of my class. How modest of you. Well, it's that there's nothing to do sometimes. When?
and they're learning to read and write. You'd like to read and write, wouldn't you? But the headmaster says I can't. There aren't any books for blind people like. Simon puts his work aside. I have something for you. He places a board on the workbench between them and takes Louis's hand. This. She guides the boy's fingers to the board. The letter A. Louis's fingertips trace the shape. <laughs> An A. This is A. <laughs> Can you make a B? Simon picks up his hammer and a round-headed harness tack. Touched by his son's delight, he begins making a B next to the A. The rest of the alphabet soon follows. My father's idea was brilliant. Louis never tired of learning his letters. And then one day something amazing happened. Something that would change all our lives, especially Louis. The rich and influential Marquise d'Orvilliers took an interest in my clever little brother. Monsieur Braille, the Royal Institution for Blind Youth in Paris takes just one child from every region in France. It's only through one of my contacts I found there's an opening. It's a rare chance. I couldn't possibly afford to send Louis to school in Paris. A scholarship is available. Madame? Would I learn to read and write? Yes. And do they have books there for the blind to read? Yes. Oh, please, Father, you have to let me go. Simon hesitates, glancing at the Marquise. We'll think about it. It wasn't really a lack of money. My father couldn't bear the idea of his youngest son going so far away, all by himself. Chris, still wearing his shades, noodles on a guitar, and watches as Simon leads Louis through the bustling streets of Paris. Simon falters to a stop. What? Are we there? In front of a grim stone building. You all right? My father said later he was thankful Louis couldn't see the building he was about to commit him to. They approach the door of the Royal Institution for Blind Youth. Louis holds his father's arm, alert to all the unfamiliar sounds in the street behind them. The door is opened by a middle-aged man. I've been expecting you. I'm Monsieur Dufault, the director of the Institute. Please, follow me. Hiding his reluctance, Simon leads his eager son through the door. This is Dr. Pinier, my assistant director. Good to meet you. And you. In Dufault's office. There are all sorts of wonderful opportunities for your son at this school, Monsieur Breil. You should count yourself very fortunate, Louis, to be here. The Institute enjoys a high level of respect throughout the world. And we have an excellent library of books for the blind. Mind, you have to earn the right to use them. Louis nods. I'd like to walk about with Louis to... Give him a feel for things. It would be best if you took your leave promptly, monsieur. Long goodbyes are never preferable. Father and son start for the door, watched with interest by the young Pinier and with mild disdain by the dour Dufault. Soon after, Dufault shows Simon and Louis into the boys' dormitory. Simon looks in dismay at the long, bleak room and the boys sitting dully on their narrow cots. As Dufault stops next to an empty cot. Move when you hear that bell! Simon slips a protective arm around Louis as the boys file out past them. Moments later, outside the front door, Simon hands Louis a package. There's chicken, some pastries, and... Uh, Fighting back tears. Um, some of your mother's baked apples. Simon embraces his happy son. Don't worry, Dad. I'll learn to read and write. In fact, they'll be writing you in no time. I know you will. They embrace again. Then, 
forcing himself, Simon turns away and walks off, leaving his son behind. That night, Louis gropes on the floor under his cot. His distress awakens the boy in the next cot. What's the matter? It's gone. What is? My package of food. My mother made it for me. It's gone. If you took it, I will kill you! Louis lunges at him, awakening an older boy. Shut up, you! Someone probably stole it, all right. They always do that to the new ones. It's okay. They won't always be mean. I'll show you the ropes tomorrow. If you want. Thanks. What's your name? Gabriel Gauthier. What's yours? I'm Louis. Louis Braille. They find each other's hand and shake. One night soon after, Louis feels his way out of the dormitory and along the walls until his searching hands find a sign with raised letters. His fingers trace them. L. I. B. Library. Slipping inside and closing the door behind him, he begins to feel his way about the room. He grins in anticipation when he finds a table with several objects on it, each of them the size of a small suitcase. But his grin fades when he discovers there are only three of them. Behind him, the door opens. It's Dufault. He enters with Pinier. What do you think you're doing? There are only three books, aren't there? Pinier answers. Yes. You lied. There's no huge library here. How dare you come here without permission? You said there would be books. You don't have time for books. There are three. Three books and only three. Forget the books. Get back to the dormitory at once. Tomorrow you will continue to make slippers with the rest of the boys. I didn't come here to make slippers. What did you say? I came here to learn to read. This room is forbidden to you. You lied. Solitary confinement. Pinya, take him away. I am always in solitary confinement. You tell him, kid. The guy's a total fake. Chris leans forward as Dufault waves at Pinya. The website returns oh. to Louis' sister. Louis should just leave. He couldn't. There's no way that was the only school he could go to in Paris. It was the only school for the blind in the whole world. Th that's crazy. What about the girls? There's no girls at the school. Girls were allowed to go. Years later. And lucky them. Dr. Pigny knew that Dufault was a tyrant, but he felt powerless. In his own small way, he tried to improve things. He hated the damp, cold conditions at the school and announced that the students must get more fresh air. As Louis follows an instructor and several other students through the street outside the school, two boys pop out and pelt him with rocks. Ow! <laughs> cowards! <laughs> you bunch of cowards! The assistant director's ideas worked in theory, not always in practice. One thing he did understand was the children's need to have books to read. I don't often agree with my director's point of view, but to be fair, it is difficult to print books for the blind. Pinier is in the library. Each letter must be made many times larger than the usual printed letter. This is Pierre Beaumarchais' play, The Marriage of Figaro. This is The Marriage of Figaro written out in huge embossed letters for the blind. And this is just the first volume. The entire play takes 20 of these, each weighing 20 pounds. You see the problem? It is my fervent wish that a better system be developed for the students. Dr. Pigny's wish was answered. Well, almost. 
by an artillery captain in the army of His Majesty, King Louis XVIII. His name was Charles Barbier de la Seine. At the school. I was having difficulty getting messages to my troops at night. You know, uh, advance, retreat, so on, without attracting the enemy's attention. And that's never a very good thing to do in the middle of a battle. In his uniform, he waits for a response to his little joke. Finally, Dufault obliges. <laughs> then I came up with the brilliant idea of making signs, thank you, that my men could read in the dark merely by touch. I called it nocturnal writing. It was a matter of fact, I wasn't thinking of blind persons at all at the time. But then I thought, why not? It's simple enough. Different sounds are represented by groups of dots and dashes in relief. The students sit blankly. I call it uh, sonography. The writing of sound. Excuse me, Monsieur Barbier. Uh, <laughs> Captain Barbier. Of course. Could I suggest that one of our students spend some time with your system, become familiar with it, and give us their opinion? What? Do the students here tell the director what to think? We believe that blind people are better judges than we are of what will be most useful to them. How about Louis? Louis Braille, are you interested? Yes, sir. Students, dismissed. Go quickly and quietly. How can a mere boy evaluate anything? It's just a formality. Louis is very intelligent. He'll judge your system fairly, and I, for one, will listen to what he has to say. He leaves. As Barbier stalks off in annoyance, Dufault scowls at being outmaneuvered. That night, in the dormitory... Advance on the enemy! Draw your swords! No! Retreat, it says! Retreat! Retreat! Playing soldiers, Retreat. Louis and Gabriel stumble into the cot of the older boy. The enemy approaching! Is that you, Brill? I'll get you! Whoa. He catches Louis. Listen to me, you puny little weasel. I can break you in half. Leave me alone. You think you're so smart showing off the Dufour <laughs> Pigné when all you do is bring a load of extra work onto the rest of us, aren't you? Why do we need to read anyway? He thrusts Louis down on his cot and returns to his own. Curled on his side, Louis tries not to cry. Some days later... But what? Barbier questions Louis. Speak up, boy. Go ahead, Louis. Pignet encourages him. <clears throat> your sonography, your nocturnal writing, well, your dots are exactly what we need, sir. But there are too many of them. Too many? I disagree entirely. Well, I do admit that it is a huge leap forward, but... I have spent years perfecting this. Yes, but eight or ten dots to one letter? That's far too many to remember. And far too many to feel out with one finger. So you would like to change my system? Well, now I've thought about this. <clears throat> I think with just a few alterations. Perhaps, uh... Well, for one thing, there's no punctuation or numbers. None, there's a spelling. You don't have a spelling system. You just have dots and dashes that represent sounds. Now, what on earth would a blind person want with spelling? After all, he could scarcely hope to be very highly educated. I hope for anything anyone else would, sir. Yes, but what do you want with spelling? Isn't it enough just to read and write? We need to be able to spell so that we can write correctly. Just like sighted people. <laughs> like sighted people. Your system doesn't educate. For your code to make sense, sir, a blind child would have to have a formal knowledge of language and its grammar. And that is something that not too many blind children have. It's because you don't understand what we are up against. You can't possibly because you are... Sighted! Yes! And that is why I can help you. 
And if you had any sense of gratitude, you would take the hand that leads you. Brushing Louis aside, he stomps out. His attitude outrages Chris. Who does this guy think he is? What does he get off talking to a kid that way? Why should I listen to a blind boy? You're prejudiced. Against whom? The blind. Ha! I'm trying to help the blackguards. You think that because they're blind, they're not as smart as sighted people? Rubbish! Did you hear that little gutter snipe? Proper spelling indeed. He should be glad he can learn to read and write at all. He could be out begging on the streets like the rest of them. Barbier strides off, passing Louis's older sister, Catherine. Barbier was stubborn. But he'd met his match with Louis. My brother put all his energy into developing his own system. <laughs> Go, Louis! He finally came home for a visit. It was wonderful to have him back. Louis was overjoyed to be surrounded by the familiar smells of wood smoke, horses, and leather in our father's workshop. But we didn't really see much of him. The minute he arrived, he went straight to work. At the workbench, Louis pokes a round pointed awl through the guide holes in a special wooden frame, making a series of dots in a thick sheet of paper. His father comes in. Louis, you've been working on that for days. Your mother's worried. Can't you take a break? No, I am so close. I've got it worked out so that all the letters of the alphabet are represented by raised dots in different combinations. I even got numbers, too. And there are only six dots per cell. And the best part is, I can feel it under one fingertip. So I can read with one touch. Here, I'll show you. Give me your hand. Now, close your eyes. He guides his father's finger. Now, you feel that? One dot in the top corner represents an A. That's an A. What's a B feel like? Louis shows him. B. <laughs> C. <laughs> B. <laughs> With a sharp awl, my little brother created his reading problem. With a dull one, he solved it. Back at the school. It's wonderful. Louis has found our alphabet. Even I can figure it out. Wait till you try it. Fine, fine, show me. All right, uh, read something. As Dufault looks on, Pinier picks up a newspaper. In exile, Louis makes his dots. On the remote island of St. Helena. You can go faster. Napoleon spends much of his time dictating to his friends his version of the events of his life. Watched with suspicion by Dufault and with fascination by Pinier, Louis finishes transcribing. Turning the sheet of paper over, he places his fingertips on the first line of dots. In exile on the remote island of St. Helena, Napoleon spends much of his time dictating to his friends his version of the events of his life. You did it. You did it. Pinier is delighted. Well, it was Monsieur Barbier's idea in the first place, sir. Isn't this a wonderful accomplishment, Monsieur Dufault? The director regards them coldly, then turns and walks away. The website returns to Catherine. The door to intellectual independence for the blind, Chris nods, had opened. But my brother's triumph was short-lived. What do you mean? It was cool. It worked. Well, it wasn't popular with everyone. One person in particular. And he happened to be in charge. Monsieur Dufou banned my brother's alphabet from the school. Anybody found using it was punished. And he burnt every last precious book my brother had painstakingly translated using his new method. What is he doing? Is he crazy? If the dot system of writing is officially adopted, sighted teachers will lose their jobs, for the blind will be able to teach themselves. Besides, I refuse to condone 
a form of writing, which I, myself, cannot read. Dufault pokes the burning pages of Braille transcription. At night, in the dormitory, Louis continues transcribing. The older boy in the next cot stirs. What are you doing? I'm transcribing a book. Don't you ever stop. Go to sleep. I'm almost finished. I'm on the last pages. What is it with you? Why is it so important? Because it is by a great author. It tells a tale of an incredible experience. I want all of us to be able to read it. So what's it called? Gulliver's Travels. If Mr. Dufault finds out you're using that stupid system of yours, he's going to give you the boot. Louis only smiles at this and resumes his work. Some days later... Just because I may have a better system does not enable you to accuse me of teaching other students. I have no intention of accusing you of anything. Dufault paces. One of our benefactors believes that your system is exactly what the students need. I beg your pardon? Not that I agree, but this generous benefactor is willing to make a rather large donation if I adopt your system for the use of the school. A donation that, as you know, is sorely needed. Therefore, I have agreed on one condition, that both you and Captain Barbier demonstrate your two systems to the annual meeting of the members of the board. Our benefactor seems certain that your system will prevail. Well, we shall see. At the annual board meeting... I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought and with old woes new wail my dear times waste Louis leads the applause for the blind girl's reading Stop that. Barbier objects this is an outrage it's a setup that student has clearly been given the lines beforehand to memorize you coached her, Braille. Monsieur. I'm sorry. Captain Barbier. Please, sir, by all means, choose any student you wish and any passage of literature you wish to transcribe. We will do it totally by your rules, so there is no chance of collusion behind enemy lines. I will do exactly that. Otherwise, this whole exercise has been a farce. Oh, well, in fact, why don't you do the transcription yourself, and I will do mine. Agreed. That one, and this one. He points to a girl and a boy. Take them outside, and wait with them until they're summoned. As the blind girl and boy are led out, Louis finds his way to a desk. What passage of literature do you want, sir? Literature, yes. Um, something from the scriptures. No, no, that's too easy. Captain Barbier, sir. It's the older boy. My favorite book is Gulliver's Travels. And what has that to do with anything? I have a quote from the author, Jonathan Swift. Perhaps you'd like to use it. <laughs> Louis nods agreement. Fine. Fine. He sits down at a desk across from Louis. Go ahead. Dictate it. Louis and Barbier begin transcribing. finishes first. Barbier notices and hurries to finish. He smiles smugly at Louis as the blind boy is led back in and seated at Barbier's desk. Your name? Hippolyte Gagné. There goes the contest. Gagné's very good at Barbier's method. First reading using nocturnal writing. Th there's... Nah. 
No. There's n none. So I'm sorry, I, I can't read this. There are too many dots. The Marquise suppresses a smile. Imbecile. Pigné stiffens at Barbier's insult. Proceed. Louis stands beside his desk as the blind girl is seated at it. She places her fingertips on the first line of his transcription. There's none so blind as those who will not see. There's none so blind as those who will not see. The Marquis smiles at Dufault, who reluctantly joins the applause. Barbier gathers his equipment and walks out. May I present Louis Braille, the ingenious inventor of this system, who deserves the respect of his fellow teachers and the gratitude of all blind people. Pignet needs a standing ovation for Louis. My brother's system had an enormous impact on blind people's lives all over the world. But he wouldn't live to see it. He was only 26 when he developed tuberculosis. I blame it on all the years he spent living in damp and dirty conditions. In those days, there was no cure. He passed away on January 6, 1852. The website returns to Catherine in the workshop. One hundred years later, Louis' fame had spread all over the world. Paris declared a one-week celebration in his memory. His body was taken from a small graveyard in Couvry all the way to Paris. He was buried in the Pantheon with all the great and famous of France, honored by prime ministers and kings. Louis may lie in Paris, but his hands, his beloved seeing hands, are right here in Couvry, the small village he loved so much. She smiles. I think my brother would really like that. A title appears, Louis Braille, 1809 to 1852. Chris, let's go, your dinner's on the table. This website is over. Where would you like to go next? Huh? Oh, yeah. Sure, Charlie. Um, let's print it. Chris types in the command. And the information begins printing out. In Braille. Chris, your dinner's getting stone cold. Yeah, okay, Mom. I'm just finishing. It's printing. Print job is done. Later, Charlie. Pulling off his shades, Chris removes the sheets of Braille from the printer. As he starts out with them, he bumps into a table and they slip from his hand. Kneeling down, he feels for them on the floor. Until he finds them. Then he gets up with them and continues on his way. A Protocol Entertainment production in association with Unipix Entertainment, Inc. Protocol Young Heroes Productions, Inc. All rights reserved. Cast, Monsieur Dufault, Eric Peterson. Chris, Ben Cook. Catherine Braille, Colombe de Mer. Simon Braille, Benedict Campbell. Gabriel Gauthier, Telmo Miranda. Dr. Pignet, Christopher Marin. Marquise d'Orvigny, Hazel Desbarra, Captain Barbier, Nigel Bennett, and featuring Kyle Downs as Louis Braille. Directed by Don McCutcheon, written by Heather Conkey, music by Jack Lentz, orchestration by Peter Kuhlman.
Special thanks to the children of W. Ross McDonald School. This described version of Louis Braille was created by Audio Vision Canada. The narrative description was written and produced by Marco Soren and narrated by Heather Gale. For other described programs and audio cinema presentations available from Audio Vision Canada, call toll free 1-800-567-6755. The described and captioned media program provides services designed to benefit students who are blind, visually impaired, deaf, hard of hearing, and deaf blind. These services include a library of free loan described and captioned educational media, a clearinghouse of information related to educational media access, a gateway to internet resources related to accessibility, and a center for training and evaluation of any service provider desiring to appear on the DCMP's approved lists of description and captioning service providers. There are no user registration or service fees. Visit the DCMP at dcmp.org. The DCMP is funded by the U.S. Department of Education and administered by the National Association of the Deaf.